Welcome everyone to Monday Morning Morons for April 16th, 2018. This week, let's begin with a look at how tolerant and inclusive today's college progressives really are. Black conservatives shouted down for speaking against own people. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Former NFL star and conservative commentator Burgess Owens was heckled and shouted down by students for allegedly speaking against his own people at a lecture last month. Owens routinely speaks on leadership, especially within the black community, and the opportunities America can provide for young black men, touching on similar topics during his speech at Hobart and William Smith Colleges, where he was hosted by Young Americans for Freedom. Right, so here's a guy that's wandering around the country talking about solutions, things he thinks black people can do to better themselves, and the opportunities they have in America to do so. What he did not do is blame white supremacy for everything. He did not insist that white people need to do everything for black people, but rather argues that black people can do things for themselves. And of course, he got the predictable reaction that we've come to expect from the social justice indoctrination camp. In one case, after questioning Owens on his views of police brutality and the school-to-prison pipeline, both of which are issues Owens deals with in his work with the One Heart Project, the audience member proceeded to ask him, What was your name again? Burgess Owens, he replied, to which the student commented that she thought it was Tom, in reference to Uncle Tom, before storming out of the auditorium. See how it works? You're black and oppressed. That's just an indisputable fact because we say so. Therefore, any comment from any person to the contrary is bigotry and racism if you're white, and if you're black, you're an Uncle Tom. Blacks must be victims, all of them, because they're a collective. They aren't individuals with their own thoughts and experiences. No, no, no. Every single black person to ever walk the earth is exactly the same and every single one of them must think the exact same thing, or you're an outcast. You can't be one of our community because you think. We cast you out and brand you a heretic because you have the audacity to assert that black people have agency. How dare you, sir? Owens quipped that there goes our biggest problem. The minute you start calling names, you've already stopped the debate, he continued. You're not looking for answers, you're looking for ways of insulting, and that's not how Americans do it. Sadly, you are both right and wrong here, Mr. Owens. That is our biggest problem, but unfortunately, insulting you for having a different thought is exactly how these Americans do it these days. They are not looking for answers at all. They are simply looking for someone else to blame for all their problems because it's easier than accepting that they are responsible for themselves. It's victim mentality taken to the extreme. Privileged, comfortably middle-class black kids sit in their comfy, prestigious colleges and bitch that hundreds of years ago something bad happened in the world, so they're oppressed. They sit within the ivory towers and bitch that the ivory towers exclude them. It'd be laughable if it wasn't so fucking sad. Reality has absolutely no place in their lives, and they are desperate to drag the rest of us into their delusion with them. Another then lambasted Owens for playing a sport, saying he won the American lottery. Seven years after the NFL, I failed. Seven years after the NFL, I was a chimney sweep, Owen responded. Seven years after the NFL, I decided, you know what? This is a place of second chances. We are not Americans. We are second-class citizens, one audience member interrupted as another shouted, You got lucky. How do I succeed? It's real simple. You first of all believe that you have a chance of doing it in this country, Owens commented, attempting to return the subject to his lecture, but was again shouted down by audience members saying, That's not true. You see, they are victims. Mind, body, and soul. There is no other possibility for them. They believe themselves to be second-class citizens. Whether they are or not is irrelevant now. They believe it, therefore it's true. This mentality is no different than any other religious fundamentalist. There's no arguing with people like this. Belief trumps everything. 
Your facts, your statistics, your reason, your logic are all irrelevant because their belief is all that matters and they're sitting in an institution right now that has absolutely no interest in educating them to the contrary. This is the real danger of social justice, folks. They will spend the rest of their lives believing they are victims and convincing others to be one as well. And you know what? They are victims. They are victims of superstition. They are victims of brainwashing. They are victims of bullshit narratives. They are victims of the ideology they support and their only success will be creating more victims. <laughs> okay, enough preaching, Bob. What's next? This must end in action. Students hang banners in design school after unverified sexual assault allegations. Oh, good. Some good old-fashioned mob justice. Because the legal system is so behind the times, right? A list of allegations that activists admit may be entirely false has inspired students to hang numerous banners in Harvard's Graduate School of Design, one of the latest developments in the ongoing anti-sexual assault movement on campuses across the country. Catch that? They're demanding action because of a list that may be nothing more than completely fabricated stories. We demand action! There's a sexual assault epidemic on our campus. Look! Here's a list of fictional bullshit that proves it! <laughs> Way to go, Harvard. Really showing the world just what a top-notch, prestigious institution you really are. Home to America's best and brightest indeed. The list in question, which was begun on March 15th of this year, levels sexual misconduct accusations at over 100 men on and off Harvard's campus. Titled Shitty Architecture Men, the list was openly admitted to potentially being fake. We do not represent anything here as fact, the list's anonymous moderators state, claiming instead that it represents a compilation of thoughts, experiences, and memories, and things we have overheard. Uh-huh. So, unverified, unsubstantiated hearsay, leveling serious criminal accusations against men, all kept in a neat little publicly circulated list. Pretty sure there's a word for that. Ah, yeah, that's it. Libel. And guess what? That is a crime. I hope every single one of the men you've unjustly branded sue the shit out of you. The creator of the list, in an anonymous interview last month with Suzanne Labar at Company Design, again reiterated that the list, which made dozens of specific accusations against specific men, is not at all confirmed to be grounded in fact. My purpose in creating this document was to get a conversation started. In no way do I think this is a legally binding list, or that it even purports to be factual, the anonymous creator said. Yeah, your intent is irrelevant. You've compiled and distributed what you admit is unverified accusations which defame the character of over 100 men. That is libel. I'm sorry, but you don't get to just run around branding everyone a rapist and then say, oh, I just wanted to start a conversation. Bullshit. Get a lawyer. I suspect you're going to need one. Over a hundred times. What's next? Students demand Penn State defund conservative hate groups. Hmm. Yeah. And let me just take a wild guess what counts as a hate group. Student demonstrators at colleges across Pennsylvania are demanding that their schools cut funding to hate groups such as Turning Point USA and the Bull Moose Party. Hmm, let's see. Turning Point. Yeah, big shock. Organization that advocates for small government, fiscal responsibility, and free markets. An organization whose spokesperson is a black woman. Fucking hateful bigots. But the Bull Moose Party? Really? You mean the party whose actual name is the Progressive Party? The party who nominated and elected Teddy Roosevelt? The party that advocated for women's suffrage, welfare for women, banking regulation, company-provided health insurance, and workers' compensation? That's a conservative hate group now? Well, I guess it's true then. Anything to the right of Stalin is conservative. 
The students also delivered a petition to President Eric Barton's office that urges him to defund the conservative hate groups that have attracted avowed white nationalists to campus. Huh. Who are these white nationalists, I wonder? I mean, the only one I can think of is Richard Spencer, who is not a member of, nor a representative of either Bull Moose or Turning Point, and, incidentally, wasn't allowed to come and speak anyway. So who could they be talking about? Let's see, who did speak at Pennsylvania campus? Maybe we can see who the white nationalists are. Ben Shapiro. Hmm, pretty sure he's not a white nationalist. In case you weren't aware, he's a Jew. I mean, I don't know, I'm not a white nationalist, but pretty sure I remember the Nazis have a certain unpleasant relationship with Jews. Bernie Sanders. Well, closer, I guess. He is a socialist, just not a national socialist. He sure as shit doesn't buy into small government, free markets, or fiscal responsibility, so he's definitely not associated with Turning Point. Oh, and he's Jewish too, so yeah, probably not a white nationalist either. Jill Stein. Ran for the Green Party in 2012 and 2016. Might euphemistically call her an environmental Nazi, but no one would mistake her for a real one. Definitely not associated with Turning Point or Bull Moose, though, so must not be talking about her either. Tim Kaine, Hillary's running mate for VP in 2016. Closer still, I mean, he's definitely a white guy, supports big government, social welfare by the truckload, government regulation of everything, and doesn't give two shits whether or not we can pay for it, but not a nationalist of any stripe, so can't be a Nazi. Besides, not associated with Turning Point or Bull Moose either, so he's not the one you're talking about either. I'm sure the list of speakers goes on and on, but I think you get the point by now. White nationalists aren't flocking to your campuses under Turning Point, Bull Moose, or anyone else's banner. You haven't done your homework at all. You're just flinging labels to shut down speakers you disagree with. And to highlight that further, there's this little gold nugget of irony. PSU has pushed back on the accusation that it funds TPUSA and the Bull Moose Party, arguing that neither group receives direct financial support from the school. Turning Point USA and the Bull Moose Party have not requested nor received any funding from the University Park Allocation Committee, the entity that distributes portions of the student-initiated fee for student organizations. Lisa Powers, a senior director for PSU's Office of Communication, told Campus Reform. Uh-huh. The groups you want the college to defund aren't funded by the college. Oops. <laughs> Fucking idiots. I don't expect much from these sorts of dipshits, but I'd expect them to know at least that much before they start a protest demanding people stop paying for things they aren't paying for anyway. All right, Bob, toxic masculinity time. Girl 16 accused of stabbing classmate in school cafeteria. Authorities say a 16-year-old girl stabbed a classmate once in the back with a knife in an Ohio high school cafeteria and was quickly taken into custody. Officials say the wounded girl was hospitalized in stable condition after the stabbing Friday morning at the high school in Waverly, roughly 60 miles south of Columbus. District Superintendent Edward Dickens said a teacher helped apprehend the attacker and a school resource officer was on the scene within seconds. Dickens says the two school nurses helped tend to the injured girl. Officials didn't comment about a motive for the stabbing. Oh, we know what the motive was, don't we? Toxic masculinity. This dismissive attitude that boys will be boys is... Right, girls will be girls. That's not a thing? Well, are we sure they were girls? I mean, maybe they were some gender-fluid, non-binary... Look, Bob, there's no men in this story. So if you won't let me twist and bend reality to somehow make these girls seem like men then how in the fuck can this be toxic masculinity? That was the point, he says. <sighs> Tomboys. Is that still a thing? Ah, well, there you go then. They're not girls. They were tomboys. And that means that they're prone to traditionally masculine things like stabbing each other. Shut up, Bob. Violence is not a people thing. It's a masculine thing because the prophets of feminism said so. Now, give us something funny to wrap it up. Florida woman caught with cocaine in purse blames it on windy day, police say. 
A 26-year-old woman in Florida claimed that a windy day was the reason why cocaine was in her bag. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Before you start laughing, think about it for a second. I mean, if we're talking traces of cocaine, you know, a couple particles or something, maybe she was just minding her own business and passed by someone snorting up and a few particles drifted into her purse. I mean, unlikely, but not out of the realm of possibility, right? Or maybe she had some cash in there that was in previous contact with a cocaine dealer or something and had some left on the bill. Could happen, right? So how much cocaine are we talking about here? Fort Pierce authorities stopped a swerving car in late March and questioned passenger Kenesha Posey, the station explained. Police said an officer smelled marijuana, and while going through the car, marijuana and cocaine were discovered in bags in Posey's purse. Posey reportedly said the marijuana belonged to her. I don't know anything about any cocaine, the station quoted her as saying in a police report. It must have flown through the window and into my purse. In bags. <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry honey i tried to give you the benefit of the doubt but bags of cocaine don't drift on the wind and settle nicely into a purse inside a moving vehicle i hope your lawyer comes up with a better story than that or you're fucked <laughs> that's it for this week folks remember the social justice mantra Women are victims, men are oppressors, and feminism is just about equality. I'll see you all next time.